Welcome to 4 Minute Film School. My name is Valentina V and today we're talking about light modifiers and how they affect the quality of your light. You ready? Let's go. So today I'm here with Sean Corgan, who is a commercial cinematographer and photographer. He's worked with a lot of big names like the people on The Voice, Brian Cranston, Pharrell, you name it. We're gonna go over light modifiers, but first let's take a look at what light modifiers we'll even be talking about. So in this setup, we wanted to keep several variables the same, controlled. We're using the same light in Aperture 300D, we're using the same talent, we're using the same white background. And every time we move the light, change the deflector, we put a light meter in front, made sure it was the right meter. So that way, when we look at this video, we always have the same exposure, and you can really see how the light shape is changing. All the other modifiers, some of them are aperture, some of them are not. They all have Bowens mounts, so all of these things are available to everybody out there on the internet. So first, let's take a look at hard light. Our first setup was just the 300D naked, no modifiers. How does that interact with a person's face and body? So the cool thing about just a hard light above camera is it's a bright single source light. And if you're close to a wall, you're gonna have the coolest shadows. So when you add a reflector, which comes with the 300D, how does that change the quality of the light? So you're not gonna get the, just this harsh, harsh light. It's gonna start diffusing a little bit. One of the additions you can get are these grids. They come in four different strengths. You have a 40 degree grid, a 30 degree grid, a 20 and a 10. You see, as we put on the different grids, the amount of available light gets smaller. So it's the same intensity on the face we're focused on, but we're gonna get less spread around it. So this really helps you if you wanna isolate a light. Awesome, so let's take a look at what the naked light looks like and also with the reflector and with the different grids. All right, so next let's talk about Fresnels. What is a Fresnel? The type of lens that has a bunch of concentric circles, and what that allows us to do is spot or flood a light. The bigger light, the smaller the shadow. The smaller the light, the larger the shadow. So a large Fresnel is gonna be more flattering for a face. So we showed both full spot and full flood, and it's surprising the difference you'll see between the small one and the large one, and full spot and full flood. Keep in mind, we shot everything on a pure white background and you'll see the spot and it's just this beautiful fall off to darkness and the perfect shadow behind our subject and then full flood it's like oh everything's a medium tone gray but there's a really pretty light on our subject so let's take a look at the different looks that a fresnel can give from flooded versus spotted and a small fresnel versus a large fresnel Umbrellas are used in photography a lot, but you don't see them used in video too much because up until recently, LED lights have not gotten there yet. And putting a hot light into an umbrella is just gonna destroy it. Totally, yeah. Why do you prefer reflecting the light instead of diffusing? You're shooting into it, and then you get this beautiful soft light bouncing out of it. And then we put another level of diffusion right here in front of the umbrella. And what that does, it allows us to have this great reflected soft light. And the more you can make that light bounce, the softer it gets. And then it just comes to us and it looks great. Look at where the post of the umbrella is coming out and point that post where you want it. That will give you a good light to start with every time and you can adjust it from there. I always want that soft, round, circular light in the eye and the umbrella gives it to me every time. 
You don't want to use a large umbrella on just one person because it's too soft. So with a large umbrella, you don't really have a lot of definition. You don't have a lot of shadow and it sort of just looks flat. And that has a lot to do with how you want the specular highlights to show up on a person's face. So we can really see those specular highlights in the skin when we don't use a diffusion in front of our umbrella and it's just a reflection. Why would we want to use a diffusion at all? We want to use a diffusion when we want to see a softer balance in the highlight to the shadows. So let's take a look at the difference between a large umbrella and a small umbrella, as well as the difference between an umbrella with no diffusion and an umbrella with diffusion on the front. So the last modifier that we're going to talk about in this video is a beauty dish. This is again used a lot in photography, a lot of them have Bowen's mounts that you can mount directly onto an Aperture 120D or a 300D. Sean, what's the difference between a beauty dish and an umbrella? Because they kind of look similar. Very similar in the quality of light and the catch light you're going to get in the eyes to an umbrella, but we have the ability to control it with these. This is a hard grid and it allows us to only show light through the areas that we can see through. We have this great soft light. And then we put this here, and we have this great soft light in this 22 inch area. And what you wanna think about when you diffuse this is getting the order of diffusion right. The diffusion makes it even softer, and then we put the grid on afterwards. A lot of times I see people putting the grid on and then putting the diffusion over. Light, diffuse, control. As you can see with the beauty dish, it is giving us a drop shadow right under the chin. It's really helping define the cheeks, giving us that butterfly in the eye that's similar to the umbrella, more controlled and we get this shadow under here. So it's helping us really define things like the cheekbones come out. You can have a face that doesn't have a lot of shape and you can use a beauty dish and you're gonna give that face so much shape. Let's take a look at how you use the beauty dish in comparison to what an umbrella is looking like. So there's your episode on some common lighting modifiers. Once again, Sean, what are some tips that you have for people when choosing a lighting modifier? I think my top three tips are, A, get your lighting modifier as close to the lens as possible without being in the frame. That way you're gonna get the best quality of light. B, I always wanna get my light the biggest source I can get to make it the softest. Unless we're using hard light, but if we're using soft light, just get that soft light close and see if I ever see you using an umbrella the wrong way, I'm gonna come to your set and personally fix it. Always reflect into the umbrella, people. There's a lot of other lighting modifiers that you can use too that we didn't cover in this video. That brings us to our question of this video, which is, what are some common lighting modifiers that you use that we haven't used and how do you use them? Let us know in the comments Best comment will win an MW, which is our new underwater LED light. This has been Aperture's 4 Minute Film School. I'm Sean Corrigan. And I'm Valentina V. Go ahead and follow us on social media. We'll put our links below. If you enjoyed the show, then go ahead and let us know by subscribing or liking. Till next time, have an awesome day. Ciao. By, by the, the way, way, next week we also have an additional episode. We're going to put the lights together one by one. We're going to build on top of this one. So check it out. Don't forget next week, continuation.